Herrera and today I'm going to be reviewing the third season of a show called The Crown. This is a series that deals with the life of Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain and her family, as well as events that shaped England during the last century. Season 3, though, specifically deals with events that happened between 1964 and 1977. And before Season 3 was released, there was a lot of excitement and nerves amongst viewers of the previous two seasons, because as the story progresses, every two seasons, supposedly, there will be a change of cast. So now, for example, we have Olivia Colman playing the Queen rather than Claire Foy. Tobias Menzies has taken over the role of Prince Philip over Matt Smith. And Helena Bonham Carter is a new Princess Margaret rather than Vanessa Kirby. Other new cast members for this season are Charles Dance, Joshua Connor, Geraldine Chaplin, Erin Doherty, Ben Daniels, Jason Watkins, Marion Bailey, Emerald Fennell, Andrew Buchan, among others. The third season also consisted of 10 episodes, and it was released on Netflix on November 17th, 2019. Before I begin my review though, let me just say that this will be a video with spoilers, since I'm very passionate about this subject and I don't feel like I could do it justice if I don't go into a lot of details as to why I loved it so much. But you can also bear in mind that this is history, so unless you have no idea what sort of happened in England during the period of time that the third season of The Crown covers, you might want to beware. As I mentioned earlier, season 3 covers the years from 1964 to 1977, and it dwells into issues like Prime Minister Harold Wilson's administration, what happens when the Queen discovers that someone who works for her is a Soviet spy, how the Queen and her sister's marriages are going, what happens when Princess Margaret meets President Lyndon B. Johnson, the Aberban disaster of 1966, how the imposition of the military rule in Greece in 1967 affects Prince Philip, we follow the plan of Lord Mountbatten and Cecil Harmsworth King to overthrow Harold Wilson, the events that took place before Prince Charles was invested by his mother as the Prince of Wales, the first moon landing and what Prince Philip might have made of it, the love square between Prince Charles, Camilla Shand, Princess Anne, and Andrew Parker Bowles, the death of Edward VIII, the miners' strike in 1974, the attempts made by the royal family to separate Charles from Camilla, how the marriage between Princess Margaret and Tony Armstrong Jones fell apart, and the Queen's Silver Jubilee in 1977, 25 years after she ascended the throne. Okay, so I'll begin my review with the cast. Of course, all of the new members sucked it beautifully. And even the newcomers, like the actress who plays Princess Anne, managed to give a memorable performance. And as to Josh O'Connor, I'd already seen him in Lemis, but he still did a pretty good job as Prince Charles. I'm so glad that Olivia Colman won the Golden Globe. But yeah, anyways, Elena Bonham Carter and Olivia Colman deserve like all the awards ever. They were fantastic. But if I'm being honest, I still prefer the old cast. I mean, I can see why the producers would prefer to have older actors portraying the characters as they grow older rather than having young actors behind makeup and costumes and wigs to make them look older. But I still prefer the first two seasons to the third one. If only because we got to see in the previous two way more details as to the personal relationships between people. And I didn't think that we got that in the third season. For example, I personally didn't get the feeling that from only what we were shown in the third season, Charles should have been so confident that Camilla was the love of his life. Why? Because we didn't really get to see the relationship explored in as much detail as, for example, we did with Margaret and Peter Townsend back in season one. Like, seriously, I could believe that Margaret and Peter were in love with what we were shown, but with Charles and Camilla, I would have liked to see way more scenes of them together. And then moving on, the fact that we didn't get to see a lot of personal tension and drama between Prince Philip and the Queen is a good thing, because surely it means that as they grow older, they don't fight so much. But I didn't feel as emotionally invested in their storylines slash marriage, because we didn't really ever got to see them acting as a team, or even acting as enemies as they try to impose their point of view upon the other person. Person. I mean, they get these sort of existential crises, plotlines, but they deal with them separately. They don't really talk to each other about them. I don't know, maybe this was done because there's a pretty good chance that that's how it happened in real life. But concentrating specifically in the fact that The Crown is an entertainment series, I thought that that was a mistake for the show to make. Still, I actually did enjoy learning about all the political stuff that was happening in Britain during this time, because as I said earlier, I am a history lover. So all of that was really interesting. And then, when it comes to my favorite storyline, I think that would be Margaret's. Not only because she is a one character that I didn't really expect to like before season one even started, but because she's a character that I quickly became fascinated with, and because I love Helena Bonham Carter. So while I think that Vanessa Kirby owned that role in the first two seasons, as I've said before, Helena Bonham Carter just was as fantastic as she's ever been acting. Plus, she played the Queen Mother in The King's Speech, so it was nice to see her acting as Queen Elizabeth, 
the Queen Mother and then acting as her daughter, Princess Margaret. Moving on, as to which were my favorite episodes, I think those would have to be episodes 3 and 6. Why? Well, because ever since the summer of 2019, when I first discovered and totally fell in love forever with Sharon K. Penman's Welsh Princess Trilogy, I've become fascinated with Welsh history, and so at times I find myself torn between my love for the royal British royal family and my growing interest in Welsh nationality. And well, yes, a third episode of The Crown season 3 deals with the Aberban disaster, which was so powerful to see on screen and so well done and so detailed. It was a really poignant episode and I cried more than once and I thought it was very tactfully represented, being such a delicate subject. And then as to episode 6, I think it's my favorite one because here we get to see Prince Charles going to Wales. And while I think I've read somewhere that well, everything we're shown there of course is not 100% accurately portrayed, I just loved how much of the episode was spoken in Welsh and that Llewellyn Ab Griffith was mentioned more than once. Why? Well, because this Llewellyn alongside his father Llewellyn the Great are the male protagonists of the Welsh Princess Trilogy and I'm very much in love with this, with the romantic portrayals of these two Welsh heroes. So it's nice to see them mentioned whenever I can. And finally, before I wrap up this review, I'd like to say that I really love the relationship between the Queen and the Prime Minister Harold Wilson. I knew absolutely nothing about him, but I really enjoyed the fact that at the start of the season we thought that he was gonna be the Queen's enemy, but they actually end up becoming quite good friends. Okay, so I adore the British royal family. I'm also a history lover and I thoroughly enjoy watching good British actors in serious drama productions. So The Crown was always a must watch for me. But like seriously, ever since I was like 18, I've been devouring as much books and movies and TV series as I can about the British royal family. So when The Crown was announced back in 2016, I was very excited about it. And I remember that I made a video, a trailer reaction for the first trailer of season one ever. And it's one of my most viewed videos to this day. Now that we're three seasons in, I'm totally in love with this show, with the performances, the storytelling, which is top notch, the costumes, and the fact that it's allowed me to get to know so much of Queen Elizabeth's reign. Seeing as I've always been more interested in the British royal family dating back from World War II back to the Middle Ages. So yeah, anyways, season one is still my favorite so far out of the three, though I think this is in part because of that relationship between Princess Margaret and Captain Peter Townsend. But yeah, anyways, moving on, when it came to season three before I saw it, I was a bit hesitant about how the new cast would fit in because I totally loved the actors from the previous seasons. But I still had confidence that Helena Bonham Carter and Olivia Colman were gonna do a fantastic job of it. And when the first trailer of season three came out, I was constantly rewatching it because it was so beautiful and powerful and the music, ugh, it was so good. So that made me feel pretty excited for like a fortnight up until the day when season three was released. Anyways, for the moment I believe that this is all I have to say about the third season of The Crown. Thank you so much for watching my review of it. Please let me know if you enjoyed it or not, as well as what are your own thoughts on this season, on the series as a whole, or about the historical aspects and characters and periods in history that it represented, or even what are your own thoughts on the British royal family. Also, there will be a fourth season with the same cast and I've already seen some photos online of Prince Charles shooting scenes with the actress that's gonna play Diana. So if you're interested in Diana Spencer, you might want to check out season four, which I shall of course be watching and reviewing when it comes out. But in the meantime, you can find in the description box below a link to the show's IMDb page, a link to my review for season one and season two, as well as a link to my trailer reaction to the first trailer ever of The Crown, which as I said, it's my, one of my popular videos ever. But yes, anyways, I'm Caro Herrera, the Mental Traveler, and I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I'll be seeing you soon. Goodbye!